I spent 10 years working on spatial computing, helping to build the world's first spatial operating system, and this week I'm posting thoughts about the amazing new Apple Vision Pro headset. Yesterday I talked about the four things that a headset will have to get right to be a mass market consumer device, and the day before about how the Vision Pro is both an augmented reality and a virtual reality device, which is important and truly impressive. Today, story time. At Oblong Industries, where I worked on spatial computing from 2006 to 2014, we got deep into negotiations with two big TV manufacturers who were interested in building our spatial gestural operating system into televisions. But we never got all the way there, and the problem was cost. It was a magical user experience to just point at a TV with your hands and drive the UI. And in 2012 or so, enabling that capability required maybe a hundred dollars worth of optoelectronics. None of the major TV manufacturers had a bomb, a bill of materials budget for what we were doing that exceeded $10. Even assuming some wiggle room on both the cost side and the budget side, we were off by somewhere between a factor of five and 10. The glorious thing about Apple is that not only is Apple the best large scale hardware company in the world, and it's not even close and the best integrated hardware software product company in the world, but they're willing to introduce products at a price point much higher than their competitors. Apple trusts that their judgment about the timing of launching new product categories, combined with the very high quality of their products, creates value commensurate with those higher prices. This ability to sell things that are more expensive changes the game completely. Which sounds simple, but it's not a playbook that anyone except Apple seems to know how to run. Today's music is Tick Tock Time from Maurice Brown's 2010 album Cycle of Love. Derek Duget, Chris Robb, Solomon Dorsey, and Joe Blacks. <laughs>